What is an amplifier's damping factor? Okay, I, think, I don't think we've talked about that before, but it's a great question from Eric in Portsmouth, Virginia. Virginie. Hey Paul, how important is an amplifier's damping factor? Is a damping factor value an actual way of letting you know how well an amp is capable of controlling a driver? Last but not least, is it a spec that we should be concerned with when deciding on a good amp? Thanks for all your informative videos. Yes, Eric, it definitely is. It's a very valuable spec and will tell you quite a lot about the ability of an amplifier to control a loudspeaker. So let's, let's start with what, what is damping factor and how would we know whether it's a good spec or a bad spec. In its simplest form, damping factor, high damping factors are better than low damping factors, right? So how do, what, what is a damping factor and how do we calculate that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Damping factor is a way of identifying output impedance of a power amplifier. And you want low as opposed to high. So the lower the output impedance of an amplifier, the greater its ability to drive something or to control something without something coming back and controlling it. And we, we measure it quite simply. Uh, you, you can take a um, uh, I think we use like an 8 ohm resistor and we have an amplifier that uh, is, is you know turned on and uh, at the output so we hook up the the resistor at the output and then we put a um, a signal into the resistor and we see uh, what happens so let's let's say that the uh, and at, at, at the junction, right, so of the amplifier and, and the resistor. So when we do this, let's, let's say the worst case, and this doesn't, this rarely happens, let's say that the amplifier has an output resistance or impedance of 8 ohms, and we put an 8 ohm resistor into it. Well, when we put a signal into that, we can easily measure the impedance of the amplifier because it, it's the same as what I would have if I had uh, two 8 ohm resistors in series and I put a signal through it, you'd get half the voltage uh, that you put in over here at the junction, right? So just we're modeling the amplifier as a resistor and so I would just get half the voltage. Now that's, that's terrible, that's, that's awful because any change over here in the, in the speaker is going to be reflected back in the amplifier and the amplifier won't be able to control it, it won't have enough current to, to, to control it. So an ideal amplifier has an extremely low output impedance. Let's call it 0.01. Now, I'm not very good at math, so you'll have to work that backwards. But if you just use Ohm's law, um, and, and if we inject a signal into our 8 ohm resistor and we measure at the output and we don't see anything there, there's no voltage being developed at all, or a very tiny voltage being developed, then we can simply use Ohm's law to figure out um, the, the, the ratio, what, what this resistor, as modeled by an amplifier, would be. And so, uh, and then you just divide one into the other, and you get this, this damping factor. And the higher the damping factor, like a damping factor of a thousand, uh, is really good, or a hundred, or two hundred, uh, you know, anything over I don't know, 50, 60 uh, is really good. And, uh, and you want to just go higher because damping factors are important because you want the amplifier to control the speaker, not the other way around, if that makes sense. Now, here's something else that's interesting. Damping factor is also frequency dependent. So not all amplifiers have the same output impedance for a given frequency. So some frequencies, uh, it, it's, it's a higher output impedance and others it's a lower output impedance that's fairly common so it should be as a function you'll see it you know it's a damping factor of uh, 150 from this frequency to that frequency and that's usually how you'll do it so um, you don't need to go crazy about it and just because an amplifier has a very high damping factor doesn't mean it's a great amplifier it's just one in a series of many factors to look at uh, tube amplifiers typically have, you know, crappy damping factors. Why? Because 
if you have an output tube and a transformer that's feeding your speaker, you're not going to have very low output impedance because a transformer doesn't have very good output impedance, nor does a tube. So they've got really bad damping factors, and, and that's why you'll see they're having very different taps and things on there to try and, you know, do the best they can. But that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of, of tube output stages for amplifiers. It's, they have terrible damping factors. And so don't get you know, too wrapped up in it, but stick with amps that have a, a fairly high damping factor. Hope that helps. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. Bye.